Nick, it's really an honor to be sat here today with you talking about um, the portrait by Steve McQueen that we commissioned of you. Every year we commission uh, some new sitters for the collection, and that's actually a very unique part of the MPG that we're the only institution that doesn't just acquire historic art, contemporary art, but we actually commission people of today, of which you're one, of course. So could we talk a little bit about our first conversation, which goes back eight years ago now to when I started, mm -hmm. about um, the best person to undertake this commission, this portrait of you? Well, I think we began the conversation, and I think we both had an idea that it would be interesting to choose someone who was not a portrait painter or a portrait maker as such. So for most of my career as a curator, I've been working really closely with artists, making exhibitions, and of course, when I went to the Tate in 1988, beginning to acquire their work for the National Collection. In the case of Steve, I first met him in 1993 when he showed Bear, that very remarkable, almost debut film. It'd be difficult to say that there was a kind of signature Steve McQueen work. So I think he appealed to both you and me as someone who would treat this in a really fresh fashion. And I have known him for a long time. I've known him since the early 90s. Do you know um, Steve's response when he was approached about producing a portrait of you? Was he surprised? He must have been surprised too, I would imagine. I think when he talked to me about it, he said, well, if I'm going to do this, it needs to be a side of you that people haven't seen. So I'm not going to do an official portrait of you standing on the front steps of the Tate or outside Tate Modern or something of that kind. And, and none of us wanted that because it didn't feel yeah. like the right thing yeah. for you. It, it felt that what this portrait should do is really flag up the relationship you've had supporting artists rather yeah. than, you know, have you posed in front of Tate Modern, for example. That felt far too official. Let's talk about the particular image. And as you say, it's quite surprising for a number of reasons, um, but I think in a very good way. So one, of course, is the scale. Rather than blowing it up and making it this very imposing, monumental image, it's actually quite intimate. Um, although I would say it has a huge presence that you're very drawn to it when you see it uh, in, in the space. And then, of course, the other thing that's surprising is it captures you in movement. And so you have this sort of blurring effect. It was certainly a surprise to find myself being asked to look in one direction and then move and look in another. And I then immediately realized that he was adopting a technique that has a strong connection with the history of photography and particularly with the history of photography of the moving image, whether it be Moybridge or translated into the other thing it made me immediately think of, of course, was the images that Francis Bacon created. Bacon himself, following Moybridge, took an image and fragmented it and gave you two superimposed images, one on another, which of course is a technique that Steve himself adopted with his portrait. Yeah. And I, th I think that's a very interesting point, the way that it's in a very organic way makes reference to the history of photography, but also the, the history of still photography and its intersection with cinema. It's something that is important to him to see himself as part of a tradition and adding new language to that tradition. I mean, the other thing that's wonderful for us is that we get you into the collection, but we also get Steve into the collection for the mm -hmm. first time. So we're really thrilled by that too.